Good morning, Sierra Park. Today is Wednesday, May 10th, 2023, and it's a B-Day. On today's show, hear how our team will visit the UIL Academic Regional League. Find out more about an upcoming sequel to a popular video game. Plus, on today's Pack Chat, we give our take on the new ACL lineup. Turn it up because the Wolfcast starts now. Good morning, Cedar Park, and welcome back. I'm Jack Paulschuk, and I'm here this morning with Reagan Hill and Katie Whitmarsh. The UIL Texas Regional Meet results have been released. The University Interscholastic League is a program which consists of academic competitions where students are able to compete in a variety of academic-based categories which pertain to their interests. Students prepare by going to the UIL Academics website and practice their challenge using the sample exercises. UIL Texas helps students learn how to Pro, 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 how to be proactive and prepare them for college. Along with this, students are able to learn self-confidence and the importance of teamwork and perseverance. Senior Arnav Batra describes his experience with UIL academics competing in the computer science ring category. I've enjoyed having, a, having at least one day where my only goal is to do this one thing, like do this one thing competing. Um, I feel I felt like it really helped me just kind of get in the zone and just go in do my job and then just be able to enjoy and just have totally unstructured time being able to just go and meet people and just being able to go tour the campus something that I honestly wouldn't have really had time for just in a normal school day or just in a normal week. Congratulations to all the winners and participants of the UIL academics and good luck at the state meet. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was released six years ago. Its sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, is almost here for its release. With the release of the unique, unique Nintendo Switch console, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a massive success across all demographics. Over six years later, the sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, has been said to release on May 12, 2023. Nintendo has released several re teaser trailers showcasing brand new gameplay, mechanics, and the game's storyline. Austin Terrio... Local Zelda fanatic shares his ex expectations as the release date inches closer. I've been playing Zelda since I was a little little boy. Ever 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 since it's all I've known. Uh, I hope it's an amazing game. You know, I've been looking forward to it for like three years now. All I all I've been able to think about is like you can attach weapons to other weapons. It's pretty cool. How long do you think you will be playing this game? Forever, and ever. As long as as long as I get to look at. Look at Link. Oh. If you're interested in checking out, you can purchase the game this Friday on the Nintendo eShop or in person in stores like Tar Target or Walmart. Up next is this morning's brief of Lou Lynch, but first, these announcements. Good morning, CP. I'm Lou Lynch with this morning's headlines and today's brief. First, Biden meets with McCarthy, leader of the House, to raise the country's debt ceiling to prevent going into default on our debt. A default on our debt would mean the money would be frozen, in other words, not letting the money be spent. McCarthy says he wouldn't approve any deal that doesn't drastically cut spending to address a growing budget deficit and signaled he doesn't want it to be a short-term fix. Next, former President Donald Trump was found liable for battery and defamation. The lawsuit was brought forward by writer E. Jean Carroll, and who had an incident with Trump in the mid-90s. She was awarded $5 million in damages. Trump will not go to jail, and this does not affect his potential 2024 presidential campaign. Next, King Charles III and Camilla were officially crowned on May 6. Celebrations have taken place across the weekend leading into this week. On Sunday, the historic ceremony was followed by a coronation concert at Windsor Castle with performances from global music icons. This coronation was the first one since 1953 and over 18.8 .8 million people watched across channels and services. Finally, some interesting findings made by scientists on Mars pointed to being possible that salt water once flowed on the planet. 
This is a result of crusts, cracks, and other geological features and sand dunes that wind and dioxide wouldn't leave. They figured this out by a rover that landed on Mars and took some pictures that suggested that there's still salty water at the planet's low latitudes. So, what do we think? Okay, um, so, speaking of Mars, Harry Styles released um, a music video for one of his songs, Satellite, the other day, and it's such a cute music video. It's about a vacuum, like one of those like Roomba <laughs> yeah. vacuum oh, robots one of those. that like looks at the TV and it's um, like the rover Curiosity, you know, the one that was like Ooh, on Mars right. and then he like died on Mars. And then like, oh, it's like a really sad that's story because he was like alone for like seven years and then he just like died up there. Oh my like, gosh, it's kind of reminds me of Wally. Yes, yeah, so that's literally. really depressing anyway, actually. So the music video is like a love story between this like Roomba vacuum <laughs> and the t one on the TV and he like escapes the like the arena that he's like working in and like drives through like the desert to try and find and he uh, finds a satellite oh my at the God. end of it because the song, the song is, is about? Yeah. Oh, well, wow. no, it's like a love story, but it's, uh, it's, a that's, it's Wally. -E. That's really unique though. Like, how did you come up with I'm going to show y'all it. It's good. Okay, okay, Katie. Well, thanks, Lulu. Coming up is an all-new episode of The Pat Chat, where our hosts will debate if the English royal family still holds relevance in the 2023 ACL lineup. Welcome back to the Pack Chat, or Student Voice Opinion segment. I'm Jack Paltrick, joined by Tom B. Sancoli, Caleb Taylor, and Millie Suarez as we discuss this week's most trending topics. Let's jump into it. First, King Charles of England had, has, had his coronation this past Saturday, the, the first coronation of a British monarch since 1952. Declining support of the institution have been more prominent since the death of Queen Elizabeth II in September. So, do we think the royal family is still relevant as an institution, or do we kind of think it's unnecessary? Um, I feel like, okay, so since they do have a democracy and stuff, I feel like they kind of just have like kings and queens as like an image, you know what I mean? Like it's like the mascot of England. That's what I kind of think. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely like a complete tradition thing, you know, and they would be just fine without it, but I don't think they should just straight up get rid of it. But it definitely needs a lot of reform because um, I, I, I really don't agree with the way, you know, they've treated like Prince Harry and all that. I think a lot of the stuff they've done is kind of, blown out, out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Also, you just have like a large uh, amount of, I don't know if it's necessarily a tax that goes to the royal family, but they are getting a lot of like federal yeah. money, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know, it's just like pointless. Like they're spending all of this on a family that is only, you know, like they're referred to as your highness only because of like blood, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and who they're related to. And they do nothing. Like they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, zero. yeah, I don't really think about them like that. I mean, I don't go about my day thinking about the royal family or what they're up to. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I mean, it's definitely more of a, a British cultural thing for sure. True. Yeah. But yeah. All right, next, after writing and releasing a popular children's book about her grief, a Utah mother named Corey Richens had recently been charged with her husband's murder. Richens has claimed that she, quote, found her husband lying on the floor, cold to the touch end quote, after tucking her son into bed that very night. However, authorities had recently discovered traces of fentanyl in his system and even found physical documents confirming Richen's purchases of fentanyl over the past few months. Police have been found, even found evidence of past text messages only a few hours before the incident, but were quickly deleted. Richen's has been arrested and her hearing is set for May 19th. So, it's kind of a crazy twist. It's like a movie almost. Like what? Are yeah, that is unreal. I uh, okay. I'm not justifying like the acts of a murderer, but I feel like you know the husband could have done something too. I mean, well, like, even if, well, what even if he did, know. even if he did do something, why would she write a book about it and then and then like that's it's, like, it's just a cover crazy up. to me. It's definitely a cover well, up. Yeah, but like I feel like wouldn't you feel bad like Maybe. a little bit like. Typing out the story. <laughs> like, I don't know, people are crazy. Stuff. Like, maybe she killed her husband for marketing purposes. You yeah. Because now all these people are hearing about True. this book. Maybe Why she would just, you do yeah, that for marketing purposes, though? That's what I don't she understand. Knows what she's talking about. But I'm... She's going through some grief. But well, it's, like, it's also like a kid's why? book, so it's like, hey, if I write this, like... <laughs> 
I'm gonna be scot free because if the, if the police suspect me, like they're that's just rude on their part. Yeah. You know? But imagine how many kids like have that book in their house, <laughs> and how many parents have to like throw it out. You know what I mean? And then they grow yeah. up. They're like, why'd so, you throw out that book? What do you? What'd you <laughs> she should like remake the book, like but like completely autobiography, like like an autobiography of how it actually happened. It's like, okay, guys, my bad. I was lying. Here's the I would actually love a movie on her story though. That would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, finally, the ACL 2023 lineup was officially released after months of speculation. The headliners include Kendrick Lamar, Foo Fighters, Odessa, and more. The festival will take place October 6th through 8th and through the 13th and 15th. Tickets are already on sale. So, what do we think of the lineup this year? Are we pumped and excited? I'm, I'm pumped and excited. I am yeah. also pumped artists? and excited. Um, I don't know. I'm. My mom. She told me. She said that the tickets were really expensive. Yeah. But um, me and my sister are gonna try to save up to go because I've never been to ACL. So we really want to go. Yeah, it's a fun yeah. time. Um, I got my uh, phone stolen there. Mm. Oh, uh, Ooh, I don't really know. fun. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome at the Polo G concert. But Polo you know, G it was a good concert. Mosh pit, correct? Yes, the yes. Polo G mosh pit. I don't know what happened there, actually. Like, it could have <laughs> fallen out, and somebody was just like, ooh, free phone. Free phone. <laughs> Treasure! <laughs> but, yeah. Polo G fans, set. I can see that happening. I don't know. Maybe, like, I, there was, like, a whole case of, like, people that just went there to steal phones. So, like, <laughs> oh, they yeah. had, like, a whole plan. Like, they had the map out. They had, like, You can, like, <laughs> easily get robbed there, though. I yeah. know, like, a lot of people's wallets have gotten stolen there, so... Bring a fanny pack or, like, one of those clear bags or, like, whatever, a little bag. No, wouldn't it be easier to just... Like when you just take it out of the fanny pack. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you have it in front, if you like hold it <laughs> on to it in the mushroom, I mean, that's like possible. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of cool artists this year, I feel like. Uh. It's better than yeah. last year for sure. I'm gonna be year. honest. I don't know. Like, I barely know anybody there. I know Niall only from like One Direction, but um, yeah. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I just saw his name there, and I was like, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing Kendrick Lamar, Kelly mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, her. a lot of big names like that are gonna be. Fun to watch. I don't know if I'll be able to go, but I'll watch okay. them online, perhaps. True. <laughs> I'll probably go. To Always be honest. Yeah. It'll be. Uh, it's too expensive. I know. Yeah. Someone, yeah. Told, someone told me it was three hundred. For a week. Three hundred thirty-five, like I think. Something like wow. that. Wow. It's actually it's way too much. Only to get your wallet stolen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we have for today. But remember, Pac, there's always time to chat. Now it's time for your pet of the week. This week's pet of the week is Casey Spar's bird, Nigel. Casey's bird, Nigel, has been a beloved part of their family for the, about six years. Nigel is estimated to be around eight years old. Although he's a picky eater, tending to prefer seeds and homemade snacks, Nigel has a tendency to snatch food from others. He enjoys perching on people's shoulders and exploring areas like the living room, dining room, and especially the kitchen. Nigel's presence brings joy and excitement to the household, despite his in <laughs> mischievous antics. If you'd like your pet to be featured on Pet of the Week, direct message us on our Instagram account at CPHS News or tweet us your videos and a short bio of your pet at CPHS News. That's all we have for you today. Thank you all for taking time to join us during your day. You can catch anything you missed and more on our Twitter or YouTube at CPHS News. You can also follow our dedicated sports Twitter at CPHS underscore sports for updates during the games. Catch tomorrow's show as we discuss the possible increase of property taxes, choirs, jazz, and Java showcase, and the final episode of this year's Cooking with Kira and Reese. With CPHS News, I'm Reagan Hill. I'm Katie Whitmarsh. And I'm Jack Polishuk. Remember to make it a great day or not, the choice is yours.